Hello guys and welcome to the first episode of my Warhammer 40k lore series. Now, what is Warhammer 40k? Warhammer 40k is a game developed by Games Workshop which started out 30 years ago as a board game with miniatures. Some little figurines you'd have to cut out and paint yourself and if you're at all familiar with war games in general you should kind of know what it's about, but basically you'd have an army, and the other team would have an army, and it depends on how big they are, depending on the game, and how many points you agreed on, but overall it's just like, I hate to use this term, but it's kind of like a risk, but it's much more complicated, and a lot cooler, and much more fast-paced, and much more action-packed than risk, but it's the closest thing I can draw with just normal people. And Games Workshop 30 years ago developed this game as a counterpart to their Warhammer Fantasy series, which I may or may not go over, but I don't know any of, I barely know any of the lore about that one. But Warhammer 40k, as the name implies, is set in the 41st millennium, 40,000 years AD. The current period in Warhammer 40k is 40,999. Now, what's happening at that point, we'll get to later. Right now, we're going from the beginning. Well, as they developed this game, they realized this is just a generic war game. This is just a sci-fi war game. We need something more. We need something to pull people in so they will play it. So what they did was they created this entire vast universe filled with lore and ungodly amounts of fluff and for some reason I just love it to bits. I mean absolutely two bits and like I don't understand why because I'm usually like like usually when complicated stories come I'm like ugh some reason I just love Warhammer 40k and getting into Warhammer 40k lore as a newbie is kind of hard since it's so th big it's kind of impenetrable um, there are of course channels you could go to like the Vaults of Terra which do an amazing I mean spectacular job at presenting the lore in a way normal people could get into. That's actually where I started was on their channel. Um, I, you know, still check out their videos when they come because, you know, I don't know everything, uh, you know. And it's always nice to learn stuff about the different chapters, the different stuff. So, Warhammer 40k is in the future. It's very far in the future. In the future, humanity is fucked. I mean, humanity is so ungodly, royally fucked from all angles, it's unreal. It's a wonder we managed to survive this long. There is just war, just heretics, aliens, demons on all sides, all trying to kill humanity to extinguish the little flame that we have. And it's just ungodly. Now, there are a lot of us. There are trillions of us at this point, all inhabiting all over the galaxy, but we're still beset on all sides by everything you can imagine, from orcs to Eldar to Necrons to the Tau to demons to Dark Eldar to heretics, just... Everywhere we go, there is war. And in the grim dark future, there is only war. So, it's a pretty like neat little concept. And what this video is going to be is going to be like a little introduction and the beginning of the Imperium. Now, the Empire of Man is known as the Imperium led by 
the emperor, the god emperor, as he's known now. But why he's known as that, we'll get to later. So, the Empire Man started back in 6000 AD with the birth of the Emperor. Now, the way the Emperor was born is very, very special set of circumstances. During that time, there were a there was a lodge of shamans, as they were known, to human people, who were psychers, psychics of uh, the universe. And I'm gonna have to explain a lot of things because I got to I have to explain what these things mean. So they were psychers, and psychers are people who can utilize what's known as the warp. And what the warp is, it's basically the anti our universe. It's a place of no order, just formless energy rolling in waves everywhere. And psychers or psychics, but the lore calls them psychers because uh, English was apparently degraded so much we got these stupid terms. Psychers use the warp and channel it into their will. Now, there was a lodge of shamans who were psychers, and they could see into the future because they were very powerful, and they foresaw that if they didn't do something, humanity was going to be overrun, overrun by the warp. So, with their great power, and there was around a thousand, I think the last estimate was saying around a thousand, they made the suicide pact, where they would kill themselves and transfer all their souls into one unborn baby. So they all poisoned themselves off themselves at one time and released their minds into the warp. And I'll go over psychers, <clears throat> how psychers and the warp in later videos. I'll get into more finer detail, but for now we're just getting a general overview of the Imperium. So they released their souls into the warp and they all managed to channel their spirit and their souls into the unborn child who would later be known as the Emperor. Now when the child was born the parents didn't know anything. The parents just thought normal healthy baby because that's what he was at first was just a normal child. Now estimates <clears throat> I'm dying over here estimates have said that the Emperor was born somewhere around Persia in the year 6000 BC. So he was born and as he started getting older he started displaying superhuman abilities just unimaginable amounts of power. And as he grew older he started realizing what they were for because he could tap into the memory of the souls he had and he learned what his purpose was. He learned that he is supposed to protect humanity. He is humanity's guiding light, as it were. But, for the time being, he was just content, set light. So that's what he did. He didn't make himself known. He simply sat back and let humans do their thing. So that went on until, I think, the yeah, last assessment was the 21st, late 21st millennium. So surprisingly, around this time, but far in the future, when what's known as the golden age of technology comes around, when humans are finally at that cusp of the singularity, as it were, the perfect melding of humans and technology and just this beautiful scape of what we're able to do just blossoms in front of us we've started traveling inside the warp because if you travel through the warp it's a lot faster than going in normal space because you can only go at the speed of light in normal space but in the warp you can technically go faster because there's no rules so we started utilizing the warp but using the warp is really dangerous because without a special field that projects a bit of the actual universe around you demons would get into the ship and you can't really tell where you're going inside the warp, so 
learning the warp and charting the warp was a big deal. And eventually there came a mutation known as the Navigators who had a third eye as it were which actually became a third eye later on. But for now it was a third eye as it were which allowed them to see into the warp and understand it. And they're the ones who started charting it and mapping it out and everything. And if a regular man were to look into the warp they would go insane. It's just a place of such mad power in excess and uncontrollable temperament that a Saiyan man would instantly be broken the moment he looked outside the ship's portholes. But as uh, humans started using the warp, we started charting it, we started getting a bit better at navigating it, we started going to other star systems, colonizing, and at this point, Earth, or Terra, as it's known, because we started using the Latin term, also known as Gothic term for everything, Terra has completely run out of resources. Terra has been drilled clean. There is nothing left on Terra. Terra becomes a center trade hub. That's how Terra keeps surviving. That's how it keeps being the center of the human empire. But, but, a terrible thing happens. Huge, rolling warp storms start interfering with travel. And where these warp storms came from, I'll explain in a later video. But huge warp storms start decimating travel. The warp becomes completely untravelable. You cannot pass through it, otherwise your ship will be lost instantly. And so, when this hits, humanity is in essence shattered. Because we can't talk to any of our, our people. They can't talk to us. And we're completely cut off. There is no way either of us can get to each other. Well, this is when the Age of Strife begins. Or Old Night, as it's called in the lore. She, Terra is the worst impacted. Terra is picked clean. There is nothing left. It completely survived off being a trade hub. And now with that trade gone, it just devolves into pure anarchy very, very quickly. M murder and pillaging and conquering was the flavor of the day at that point. Now, our beloved Emperor at this time sees this. And he knows he's supposed to protect humanity at all costs. So he starts making plans to reconquer Terra. So in all his great wisdom, he builds the uh, Stormtroopers, Storm Soldiers, I believe. I, I might be getting that name wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Please do in the comments. I always, I like, you guys are free to correct me at any point. Storm Soldiers, who are genetically modified humans, who are stronger faster, more resilient, you know, just better humans. So he builds armies of these, and he starts reclaiming Terra. He starts fighting other, all the other warlords and beating, you know, them because he's so intelligent and he's such, he's such a powerful psyker, and he's got this huge army of uh, gene-enhanced warriors. He eventually reconquers Terra. And this is when what's known as where the lore for 40k officially starts. But that will have to come in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching my first video of the new, basically my new, how my channel is going to be run from now on. Um, if you liked it, please leave a like. Please subscribe. Please tell me what I got wrong. Tell me what I got right. You know, leave your feedback. I appreciate it more than you could believe. Just because it lets me know that people are actually listening. But for now, this is Regric signing off. Thank you all so much.